Let's talk conference champion predictions for the SEC conference. Um, all right, let's go ahead and pivot on over to our preseason predictions on the SEC. All right, so now before we jump into it, I do want to make a clarification. The dark horse pick is not third place. The dark horse pick is the pick that we think is not likely to win, but could win. Yeah. If certain things fall their way. And also, again, we have not shared this pre-show. I don't know what his picks are. He doesn't know what our picks are. Uh, Some tell me a lot of these are going to be pretty similar, but, you know, it's the SEC, so we'll see. Absolutely. Uh, I try to be a little creative with mine on this one. Though. Um, all right, so do you want to start with your dark horse, or should I start with mine? You start with yours. Okay, my dark horse is going to be Alabama. Dark horse is Alabama. I love Roll that. Roll Tide, baby. Okay. Roll Tide. So, uh, Kalen DeBoer obviously knows how to coach, right? He's got Jalen Milrow, uh, his talented quarterback. If there's any next level for Jalen to hit, Kalen and his staff is going to get him there. Yeah. I really think there's more on that arm and more in that in that quarterback talent than is that we saw last year. Yeah. And I really think that uh, that Kalen DeBoer can get it out of him. Uh, he also retained a lot of his staff, staff from Washington, uh, while Bama did lose a lot of their talent. Uh, with Saban's retirement, they still arguably have one of the best interiors in college football on the offensive yep. side. They also still have a stacked defense with the additions from Transfer Portal. Uh, we also had uh, LT Overton uh, transfer from Texas A&M, ranked 30th overall in the portal this season, and also fifth out of defensive linemen. So I don't know, man. I just like it. I, and I just do think that with Saban sticking around in kind of an advisory role, I don't really think that Alabama is going to fall too far. And you know, if you watched a lot of Washington football last year, which we got a chance to. Absolutely. This is definitely a coach that could surprise some folks right out of the right out of the gates year one in the SEC. I totally agree. Totally agree. Who do you got as your dark horse? My dark horse, I have the University of Texas. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Run your line. Okay. So I want to start by saying I truly believe that Texas has a very good shot of making the extended or expanded college football playoff. This team was great last year. I think they're going to continue to be great this year. Um, they are returning, obviously, Quinn Ewers, a quarterback. That offensive line is one of the top offensive lines in the country. It's kind of anchored by Kelvin Banks Jr. They do add Isaiah Bond, the wide receiver from Alabama. I think he's going to help them replace some of the wide receivers they lost and obviously um, Worthy and Mitchell, those guys both in the NFL these days. Steve Sarkeesian, he he's just got his work cut out for him, though. Um, this this is a, obviously the SEC is big boy football. If there's anybody in the conference that has an outside chance of becoming a conference champion, it's absolutely Texas. Keep in mind, folks, we want to hear from you. Let us know in the comments down below yeah. what you think of our rankings so far. Um, all right, so I'm going to go ahead and go with my runner-up. Is that all right? Absolutely. Okay, so my runner-up is going to be Ole Miss. Ole Miss? Yeah, they're okay. my runner-up. And let me explain why I picked them over Texas. Okay. Um, first of all, okay, they have a very soft schedule to open, right, to open up with. They don't go on the road in the SEC till week six, and that's at South Carolina. Yeah. Is who they're playing in week six. And the Gamecocks did not make the, in case I missed it, they did not make the AP top 25 list. No, uh, sir. Ole Miss is the sixth ranked school in the country. Right. right now in the top mm-hmm. 25 and the only other team they play in the preseason top 10 AP in the top 10 AP poll uh, is Michigan. So they, the other two teams they play there in the top 10 top 25 rankings is LSU at number 13. That one's going to be a tough one. That one's going to be on the road. I do still like Ole Miss's chances with that one. Uh, it's it's going to be tough, but I think they can also get it. And they also, uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know. If, I don't know who LSU has even coming in at quarterback. I mean, they relied so much on Daniels last year and he's yeah. gone now. Yeah, that's just a really tough place to play. LSU is a very tough place to play. So, Absolutely. Between that and they also have uh, Oklahoma, but that's at home and they're ranked 16th. So I really do kind of like that. Like, like I said, they only play one top 10 preseason ranked team. And it's and one of the other top twenty five. The only other team that they're playing that's in the top twenty five. One of them's at home, and one of them's LSU. And like you mentioned, they've got question marks. Yeah. So that's you know Texas plays two teams in the top ten in Georgia and Michigan. Yep. And while Texas does get Georgia at home, I still think that they have a chance to lose uh, the game with Michigan on the road. So. You know, Michigan's ranked number ninth in the country. You still have their, you know, we talked about them yeah. a couple weeks back. So yep. I don't know, man. Check out the video. Yeah. So I don't know. I just think that Ole Miss has a better chance of coming away, coming out of the season with only one loss than I think Texas does. Yep. So that's my runner up. Love it. I'm going to get smashed for this one. Uh oh. My runner up's going to be Georgia. Okay. Oh. <laughs> oh, I'm ready for it. I'm ready for it. 
Run your line. Uh, they got Dylan Bell, Oscar Delp, and Colby Young all catching passes this year. Carson Beck's going to be outstanding as usual. There shouldn't be any problem for this offense finding a rhythm. Um, the defense is going to be as talented as ever. Uh, Malachi Starks, um, he transitioned to safety, been a standout defender. The only reason that I don't have them winning this conference is these guys have a really, really tough schedule. Yeah. Um, yes, they do. They are at Alabama. They are at Texas. They are at Ole Miss. They are at Kentucky. And if any of those games go south in the conference standings, it is just really, really tough to win. I mean, I think they, I think they can win enough of those games to be in the conference championship game. But I think the problem with a team like like Georgia is if you do lose a game, it kind of throws. I mean, this team's expected to win every single game, and I, I feel like it can get into their head really quick. And it could potentially turn that season downward, especially if they lose one of those road games. So, yeah, that's a very good point. I did not, I did not realize how many of those tough opponents were road games. Yeah, road games, man. That's a and very, they, very good point. Yeah, they they got some really tough road games, and we'll see. I mean, I don't. Get, I'm not saying Georgia's a bad team. I just think that they they could really struggle with that road schedule. All right. So let me tell you why I think Georgia's going to win the SEC conference. Okay, deal. Okay, so the again, they fell just one game shy of winning the SEC championship last year after winning 29 games in a row. Yep. They are out for blood, man. Yeah. Carson Beck is easily going to be your first round, uh, first quarterback off the board in the 2025 draft. Um, not much to say here. There's a reason why they're on the odds and betted favorite across the board to be the national champions. Yes. Is this team is just absolutely stacked with talent. They have a top to bottom, they left are, to right. They are winning pedigree all throughout. Like I said, just one loss to uh, the Crimson Tide, Roll Tide uh, in the SEC championship game. And, you know, again, they're just not going to let that happen this year. And, you know, the only team that was in their way was was the conference champions. And like mm -hmm. I said, I don't think that Alabama is going to be in the way. Sorry, Alabama fans. But I don't think that Georgia's going to have any trouble with that this year. So, again, I know it's boring to go with the number one ranked team in the country, you know, and the odds on favor to win the national championship. I know it's boring. And I know it probably makes bad for bad, uh, bad views. But, uh, yeah, I got Georgia just simply because – they're just that talented that 29 win streak they definitely probably played a lot of tough road wins in the, in that schedule and those 29 wins that they've had so um, that's uh that's who i got for your sec champions okay, yeah i don't i don't i'm gonna go alabama crimson tide for the for the conference champions i like it dude i like it <laughs> that is bold that is bold and i like it so i i think that kaylin DeBoer has everything to prove and almost nothing to lose this dude is a fantastic head coach. He turned a Washington program, got him all the way to the national championship, and they are not half as talented as the Alabama roster that he just got. How it's years all about coaching three. Yeah, yeah, it was not long. Not not long enough to completely turn a roster around. I mean, yeah. he just did it with what he had. Yeah, now it's coming into... I mean, he, yeah, he did bring in Michael Penix from Indiana, but like, to be honest, it's not like Michael Penix was the most highly recruited quarterback yeah. in the country, and the dude t turns out to be a Heisman candidate. Nice. He has, he he lost a ton of talent in the, in the transfer portal, but he did a ton of recruiting to get back a lot of these guys. He got some of his talented guys from Washington to come with him. Mm -hmm. Jalen Milrow is absolutely the catalyst that will move this team this year. Again, DeBoer turned Penix into a Heisman candidate, and I believe he will do the exact same thing with Jalen Milrow. I think he will do a much whisper, man. Yeah. I mean, I think he's just going to do a great job making sure he's protected. He has a little bit more time to throw. The thing is, is he did the whole Heisman thing with Penix as, as talented as Penix is. And he is a fantastic throwing quarterback. You can't deny that Jalen Milrow has more raw tools than Michael Penix Jr. He's did. just a better overall. He's, athlete, he's just a better athlete, right? Yeah. So I think with, with the coaching that his offensive staff can help with, I think it's going to be huge. The, this Alabama defense is absolutely insane. It's the most talented group of players that DeBoer's ever had. They're going to be tough. They're going to be hard-nosed. I think they're just going to be just suffocating this whole year. And it's going to give Milrow enough exposure with this new system that, that Alabama can really, really get get rolling. Again, that game against Georgia is huge when it right. comes to one-on-one -on -one conference standings. And that's at Alabama. Right. That is advantage Alabama. True. I, I just don't know if you're going into Alabama and you're going to get yeah, I mean, even the Vegas odds on that one, because it is such a tough place to play. Tuscaloosa is for real, man. My those folks, Bama, those Bama fans are loud. They're crazy. The players get hyped up to play there. It's going to be awesome. I don't know, man. I, I think this Alabama team is going to be 
They're going to repeat. Really, huh? really good. And I think they have a chance. Nice. I like it. I like so. it. So, yeah, I love it. I think it's a great, it's a great pick. Like I said, I have them as my dark horse. Uh, the only reason why I have them down that far is you've got a Pac-12 coach coming into big boy football territory. I don't have any other coach that's transferring into a new conference having that much success. I think DeBoer's the guy, though. He is definitely yeah. one of the guys that could definitely do it. Yep. Yeah, him, Dan Lanning, and, you know, yep. Kyle Winningham. Those are, I think those are the three that are really going to make a splash. So that's a lot coming from you to come to go to Alabama, man. I, this I is am. a Utah fan, ride or die Utah. Yeah, and I am not an Alabama fan. <laughs> I'm not an Alabama fan. He made that quite clear in our preseason. Way too early predictions. You're like, I am not an Alabama fan. Yes. I don't want to. So... That was fantastic, man. I absolutely like it. Absolutely like it. Shout out to my T-Bill folks for sure. I think it's a great pick, man. I absolutely love it. That's uh, that's what... Uh so completely different on all three this time yeah we were i like it <laughs> once again folks we want to hear from you let us know in the comments down below what do you think of our picks there are, are we way off or are, did we you know give a middle finger to your fan base there let us know in the comments down below we would love to hear from you on that so make sure that you do so make sure you guys hit that subscribe button